Hello and welcome back to the port. I'm Gav Measure and this is Amateur Ports. Amateur Ports is your gameplays with my commentary and today we have a submission from YT Brandon ABC who's playing the tn 7 British Tech Tree Destroyer The Lightning. Now this is a tier 6 and 7 game of Domination on the Atlantic and for the rest of these Amateur Ports I will refer to the player as Brandon. Uh, thank you Brandon obviously uh, for sending this in, it's always much obliged. So, uh, on the enemy team, there's an Ashashio, a Jervis, a Z23, a Mayuku, a York in a division with a Nelson, a New Orleans, a Gneisenhauer, and a Richelieu. On the friendly team, there's an Akatsuki in a division with a Zara and a Boise. There's also a Backlin, a Brandon in his Lightning, New Orleans, a Nakato, a Nelson, and a Bismarck. So Brandon is born in the centre and he's uh, cautiously pushing up towards the Bravo objective. It looks like the uh, supporting cruiser he spawned with is pushing over to the uh, right flank towards Charlie. But it's good to see that the destroyers are doing vaguely what they should be doing. The one that spawned on the left is going towards the Alpha objective. The one in the centre is scouting out the middle objective. And the one on the right is pushing towards the Charlie objective, which is quite nice. Now Bravo is being captured. So rather than rushing right in there and seeing what's what, he's just uh, circling, circling the outside, seeing what's going on, letting the game develop, letting uh, basically letting the enemy uh, ships get spotted, therefore he can work out whether or not he can uh, stick his toe in or whether he needs to just hold off, which is actually quite nice to see. Holding on to those torpedoes very nicely. Now New Orleans on the left flank keeps calling him back, but at the end of the day you don't capture anything by retreating sometimes. So whatever spots him, it's got definitely a better detectability. There's the Ashasho. She has started the layer smoke screen. Knocking out her engines. Looks like she damaged Condit. So that would probably lead me to believe that she's not running unstoppable or a commander with a quick fix trait. Getting a nice uh, couple of defender ribbons as well there. Now this is where playing a British destroyer is um, very helpful because the British destroyer comes with sonar which has a, well I can detect ships at 3.5 kilometers range. So having that active he can uh, easily dodge these torpedoes. By the way, there's uh, already two volleys of torpedoes come past. We know the Ishashu has used her torpedo reload booster. And so it's time now to do uh, a nice sneaky thing that I like to do in the British Destroyers as well, which is close in and flush out that smoke screen using your sonar. Also, looking at the way the enemy team has been spotted on the moon map, there's no way that this Ishashu has much support from his fellow uh, teammates. So Brandon's able to really pick them off. Knocking out his engine again, I believe. And there we go. Kill number one, very nicely. Got the Shashu killed in the center. Now that he can focus on getting the capture. So, while he's getting the capture, looking at the mini map, doesn't look to be too much going on. Obviously, a uh, potential enemy destroyer uh, in the sector, highlighted by Brandon there. So, he needs to be personally aware of that as well. Hmm. Oh, there we go. That's a Jervis. That my York is very far back. Yes. Yeah, so so the, the enemy center, even though the Ashasho pushed in, the supporting vessels didn't push in with him. And the Ashasho, having laid a smoke screen, probably should have started legging it, knowing that a, uh, a destroyer with sonar was probably going to push the smoke screen. So as always, down in the description will be the commander build and the ship modules used by uh, Brandon during this uh, submission. Now, uh, modules, he's taken aiming systems module 1, steering gears module 2 and concealment module 1. And then he has the fourth slot empty. And then uh, as for upgrades wise, obviously he's slowly upgrading the ship. So at the moment he currently only has hull upgrade B. Looks like the Nelson's taken his brave fills and started to push in towards the centre. Firing off those torpedoes one by one in order to form a uh, almost like a donkey punch. The way if they were, all those torpedoes hit, uh, then it's going to be very devastating. It looks like the enemy Jervis was killed over in the Charlie objective as well. 
Nelson's still barreling down on, well, bearing onto the Bravo objective, I guess you could say. So command-wise, he's using Vegetal Tywit, level 16. Skills are contact is imminent, look at me now, back in stock, and smoke on the water. Getting himself a single torpedo hit on the uh, Nelson, getting the flood in, so the chances are that the, the Nelson has damage controlled that. Inspirations wise, he's taken Eric Bay, level 16, and Charles Martin, level 15, legendary 1. Mm, that York could be a potential problem, however, outside torpedo range. So obviously because he hasn't yet got the torpedo upgrade module, he is still working with 8 km torpedoes. Obviously once you have the lightning fully upgraded, you are looking at having 10 km torpedoes. And that additional 2 km can re is a real help, I guess you could say. Especially when you consider that the radar range of um, most tier 6 radar cruisers is about 8.5-ish km. And um, for a tier 7, you're looking at about 9 km. Obviously... There's things out there like the Chapaya, which has a, I think it's a 10.7 kilometer uh, radar. So the Nelson is capping the Brav objective. And then the York is skirting around the corner. But since, um, since Brandon took on the Shashu, he hasn't been spotted. So his exact location is not identified. He gets another torpedo hit and flooding on that Nelson. And the flooding looks to be sticking for now. Looks like the Nelson has damaged combat flooding. Now the York can be dangerous because the York has gotten a very aggressive sonar. However, there goes the York, which buys Brampton a bit of time, because now all, he know, all he's got up here now is the Nelson. Now, it's probably safe to assume that the Nelson probably is taking target acquisition mod, uh, therefore has a rate guaranteed range of acquisition of 3 kilometers, And we're closing in on that. But I think she's going to have to come around the corner to um, actually have to, uh, to detect Brandon before uh, actually... Getting that close, I guess you could say. But simply biding his time, waiting for his moment to strike. It looks like the Nelson's just started to commit. So just getting those torpedoes away. There goes five torpedoes. So the torpedo launchers on the Lightning, they're uh, always quadruple launchers. Uh, you don't get the, any of the quintuplet launchers like you do on the Jervis and the Icarus. And there we go, two more torpedo hits and flood in and getting ourselves our second kill. Now the enemy team has unfortunately um, pretty much collapsed I guess you could say. Had the uh, York and the Nelson maybe pushed up a bit earlier at the start and actually supported the Ashashio, then uh, the chances of uh, Brandon being able to push that Ashashio would have been quite limited, and therefore um, the Ashashio would probably be still alive. I don't think there was any reason for them to actually hang back as far as they did for as long as they did, especially with the Nelson. Uh, Nelson could have probably pushed up into the north eastern quarter just to close in and give himself some options with his range the york could have pushed in close enough to the island a lot earlier on oh well with the situation being what it is might as well flip the bravo cap and get that captured for his second capture of the game and looking at the two enemy ships, my god, there's not a lot of HP left on the enemy team. So there we are, getting ourselves an assisted capture. However, the enemies are able to bag themselves one last kill. Or one more kill at least. 
Looks like the Bismarck is probably AFK on our team. So I guess you could say that Brandon's team is uh, four ships down instead of just three. However, with the amount of HP the enemy have, shouldn't make too much of a difference. Now, Mayuku could be quite a concern. She did look to have quite a bit of HP left, like more than the Gunai's now. Plus, the Mayuku's going to have those 8-inch um, guns with Japanese high explosives, which are really going to hurt. Plus, she's also going to have Sonar. However, having a look at it, it would appear that she is breaking off from the Alpha Objective and pushing north, which is good news for Brandon. However, we know that this Gunai's and Hauer is just around corner there she is she got about probably a thousand two thousand HP getting a smoke screen laid the first smoke screen of the game and thankfully the Mayuku's gone round the island so the Mayuku can't draw a direct line of sight onto Brandon while he's firing mostly getting shatters with the high explosives that means you're hitting the uh the thicker armor on the ship, so the high explosives doesn't do much like penetrating damage, and it's mostly down to splash damage, if 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 any at all. Using the sonar to try and see what we can see. Obviously, with that British sonar, three point five kilometers detectability of enemy ships. However, the Gneisen Howard being a tier six, there's a good possibility that she's taken uh, target acquisition mods so again she might be able to pick you up at three kilometers so you're only going to have about 500 min 500 meter uh warning between uh, her spotting you and, her, and well you spotting her and her spotting you i guess you could say now the gnaz now is checked up tops probably from her port side Hmm, Gneisenhauer's not spotting you, so she probably hasn't taken target acquisition mods. I might as well just fire only the one torpedo, who needs any more? Because at the end of the day, it's not about how many torpedoes, it's just down to that one torpedo that ship can't dodge. And there you go, <laughs> getting ourselves our third kill with only a single torpedo. Want not, waste not, I guess you could say. Well, here we are at the end screen, and we can see that um, Brandon has made himself quite a uh, pretty amount of damage, 53,500. It's not a massive damage burner, but it's still a reasonable but reasonable amount of damage, especially for a destroyer, getting 29 hits on target with his main battery, plus 5 torpedo hits, which caused 4 floodings, plus he's also got a fire, 3 kills, got himself 2 captures, and 9 defender ribbons as well. So, all in all, that's going to probably add up and put him on a decent positioning on his team for sure so as we go to the team screens we can see that brandon has come in top of his team with about 600 ship xp more than next best player on this team getting themselves free kills and yeah that bismarck was afk so this whole game brandon's team basically it was a eight versus nine and they still pulled off the victory very nicely uh, which is always quite amusing and obviously he managed to kill the shashio on their enemy team the Nelson, which was actually amazingly the best player on the team, and the Gneisenhauer. And obviously on the economy screen, he's made himself a nice pretty penny uh, because he has taken an epic credit booster and he also has a premium account. So both of those mean that he's basically managed to make money at this uh, tier. If it wasn't for the epic credit booster or the premium, he probably would have made a loss, but it, the loss would have probably only been about 10,000 credits. So... Um, Obviously, that ship service cost is 165,000 credits, and that is being reduced in the next patch down to 130,000 credits. So, if you take that into account, then um, you can see that he probably would have then made a guaranteed profit at this tier without having to take a credit booster or have a premium account. However, having those things when you're playing the tier 7 are always helpful things, I guess you could say. Well, all in all, that was a lovely submission from Brandon. Uh, he would like to say thank you to Back to the Port for uh, having him on the channel once again. And he'd also like to thank everyone for watching. And he hopes that everyone has a happy holiday season. Well, if you have enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. If you enjoy this kind of content, feel free to subscribe. And if you are already a subscriber, I'd like to say thank you very much. Down in the description will be the commander build and the ship modules used by Brandon during this submission. Along with the email address to the channel, if you want to send in any of your own game submissions for uh, commentary for amateur reports or sea trials 
Also, the link to Patreon if you want to support the channel on Patreon, as it is a non-monetized channel. Well, until next time, I'm Gallup Major, and back to the port.